Okay, everyone, let's start. Thank you all for uh, returning uh, this afternoon for the festivities. Uh, we have an uh, interesting program because this is the, dedica the official dedication of the uh, Pomeroy Chapter House. Welcome back, everybody. Um, Brothers and friends of Sigma Chi, we're gathered today for the dedication of this new house of Delta Psi Chapter of Sigma Chi Fraternity. We likewise welcome all invited guests, family members, and all those friends here present without whom this dedication would not be perfect. We are happy that we may unite, but that all of us are here together in this ceremony. It is my uh, privilege right now to introduce, to in to introduce uh, Bob Jones, our 65th Grand House of Sigma Chi, Order, Order of Constantine, and Significant Sig. Bob. Brothers and friends, today I want to introduce a guest, a special guest, Michael A. Greenberg, Illinois Wesleyan, 1982, who pledged Sigma Chi in 1988, or 78, accepting a bid to the fraternity's Alpha Iota chapter. It was initiated on February 14, 1979. As an undergraduate, Michael served two terms as a Magister or pledge trainer. His list of contributions as an alumnus is long and diverse, beginning with his tenure as chapter advisor for the Omega chapter at Northwestern University, and later as president of his chapter's house corporation from 1988 to 1992. He's been a facilitator at our Balfour Leadership Training Workshop 30 times and was a recipient of the Carlisle Outstanding Faculty Award in 1999. In 2000, he was appointed to Team Balfour, the workshop's organizing committee, and served until 2005. In 2005, he was also appointed chairman of the Fraternities Recruitment Task Force responsible for the creation of Mission 365, Sigma Chi's revolutionary recruitment training program. Furthering his personal drive to create enduring leaders for Sigma Chi, Mike served as a founding member of Horizons Leadership Development Workshops Operating Board from 1998 to 2011 and as chairman from 2009 to 2011. In 2005, Mike was elected to the first of two terms as an alumnus member at large of the fraternity's International Executive Committee and then took up the mantle of leadership once again in 2008 when I appointed him in one of my best appointments as chairman of the Balfour Leadership Operating Board. At the 2009 Grand Chapter, he was elected Grand Quister, our International Treasurer, elected Grand Proconsul, our International Vice President in 2011, and he served as chairman of the Grand Council in 2012. He was inducted into the Order of Constantine in 2005. That is our highest award for alumni service. Mike was elected as the fraternity's 68th Grand Council at the fraternity's 79th Grand Chapter in 2013, serving a two-year term. Mike, throughout life, has been actively engaged in other philanthropic activities, such as the Illinois Special Olympics, and the Boys and Girls Clubs, and the American Cancer Society, as well as founding the Green Leaf Program in 1998, in which he currently serves as acting president. He lives in Riverwoods, Illinois, and traveled from there yesterday. Brothers and guests, we welcome our 68th Grand Consul, Michael Greenberg. I feel like this is Groundhog Day right now. <laughs> Didn't we just do this? You can tell me there's a lot of new people here, but I'm looking out and I'm seeing the same old people. So I'm sorry, I'm off ritual script here. Okay, well, here we go again. No, uh, we, during the break, uh, I actually had the privilege of going over to visit one of our other chapters at Union. And to appreciate what you all have done here, uh, walk a mile in my shoes and probably Bob Jones' shoes and get to see some of the other chapter houses around the country in North America. And it is startling, the quality of what you have pulled together and accomplished. 
You know, this biennium, we're focusing on the ritual renaissance and revitalization, which simply means we are getting back to our core teachings as a fraternity and using the ritual as our leadership guidebook to building enduring leaders. I would say that this house dedication, this ritual dedication, represents the beginning of just that journey for a new beginning uh, at Delta Psi, uh, of enduring leaders that are going to keep raising the bar. And for you young members out there, uh, you know, when it's time for the next renovation, you will step into those leadership roles and do what some of these great alumni have done for you. So, uh, just again, quite an amazing feat. I'm privileged and honored to be here uh, for the second time. <laughs> and uh, with that, now comes the fun part. Uh, we get to present some honors. Um, the, the first one uh, I'd like to do is present some certificate. Um, but one of the great privileges as a grand council you get to do is give some certificates out, some awards out for people that have done some exceptional service on behalf of serving our fraternity and or our chapters. And so um, I would like to award, uh, and we will send them in the mail to expedite uh, the drinking festivities, I guess. No <laughs> brainer. <laughs> Uh, so, first, I want to give certificate of appreciations on behalf of the General Fraternity to the following brothers. John Pfaff. Um, we'll, you know what? There you go. So, in Sigma Chi, we have this tradition of one clap rule. Let's practice it. We'll do it again. You do one clap and we'll get through it much quicker, faster, and we'll get rain done because it's raining over here. Okay? So, let's try it. John Pfaff. Oh my god, you're just like Sigma guys from around the country. <laughs> Larry Fry. Bob Bedard. Larry Heininger. Bill Wurst. Ken Sobel. Pam Minaki. Eric Polvino. And Matt Ludman. Those we are going to be sending certificate of appreciations on behalf of our general fraternity. Let's give them a round of applause. And then, you know, as I followed in the tradition of some Grand Councils before me, we are able to give special citations called the Grand Council Citation out. I liked it better when he said, by the way, I graduated in 1988. I would need these things now. Uh, and so I'd like to award uh, to some special brothers a Grand Council Citation. Again, I'll ask them to stand. We'll do the one clap rule and send them their Grand Council Citations. Brother Bob Eckert. Alan Hanberry, Paul Castro, Bill Pomeroy, Jim Minaki, and Bob Putner. What <laughs> for? Obviously, the bar activities have to follow. So, those brothers, give them a round of applause. We're going to See, I'm off script. Okay, so uh, again, I just want to thank you all for allowing me to be here. It's been great to see so many brothers that I get to see on the international level. Uh, let's proceed now with this ritual dedication uh, ceremony and, and really getting back to our core values that have led so many of you back to this chapter and really instilled you know, a wonderful environment for allowing our ideals to show and foster and grow with. Thank you. Well, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that Justa has decided not to speak, so we can move right on through his. The bad news is I have to introduce Bill Worst for the next portion. <laughs> no, really, uh, it is my privilege uh, to introduce Brother Bill Worst. He's president of our Phi Epsilon Phi Corporation. Uh, he's a uh, alumnus of Delta Psi class of, seven, of 71, which I am a member. And he's been instrumental in laying the foundation for our fundraising campaign and the building of the Pomeroy Chapter House. Bill Worst, our president. Greetings, brothers, friends, and honored guests. Welcome to the dedication of the Pomeroy Chapter House. And we thank you for taking the time to be with us this day. 
Before we begin the ceremony, I'd like to offer special thanks to a few people. The first being Bob Hutman. Bob has, has dedicated uh, many months to this day, making this day possible, and everything that has come together this weekend for your enjoyment is because of, of Bob's efforts. So please join me in, in thanking Bob for pouring his heart and soul into this day and this weekend. Thank you. <laughs> I'd also like to thank his wife, Jean, for putting up with him. <laughs> and lastly, some of you may recall where you were 39 years ago today. I'd like to thank my wife for graciously sharing our 39th anniversary with all of the rest of you. <laughs> I'd like to take a few minutes to briefly reflect on where we have been as a fraternity. The original building behind me now, built in 1902, became a fraternity house in 1942 when the local fraternity, Phi Epsilon Phi, <coughs> later to become the Delta Psi chapter of Sigma Chi in 1950, purchased the property. As the chapter grew in numbers, an addition was added in 1972, but by the turn of the millennium, it started to become apparent that the entire structure needed a lot of work. The second floor of the original building was renovated then, but much more was needed. In 2006, as alumni and undergraduates gathered at Brown's Tavern downtown, on the eve of the first August work party, a vision for a new facility was born that would better suit the chapter's needs. As each subsequent work party improved the then existing structure and gave a much needed boost to the chapter's morale, plans were also laid to make that original vision a reality. The building we are dedicating today is a result of those plans and represents the hard work of many brothers who have offered generously their time, their talents, and their financial wealth. Yet the original vision also grew to encompass more than just a building. The Pinewoods Educational Foundation emerged, not just as a vehicle to enable the funding of this building and, the, and to help the chapter of Sigma Chi, but one that would serve the entire Greek community at RPI. The foundation complements a new paradigm for Greek living. As we dedicate this building, let me say to you that our work here is not over. The most successful chapters have a significant amount of alumni involvement. So I ask you, our alumni, to thoughtfully consider how you might become involved. Perhaps you would like to work with a house corporation as we seek to strengthen our financial bonds, our, our fraternal bonds, and to care for the property. Or maybe your talents are best expressed working with the Pinewoods Educational Foundation as their focus shifts from building to raising scholarships and grants, not only for Delta Psi, but for the rest of the Greek community at RPI. Another way you might consider is offering guidance to our youngest undergraduate brothers. All of these opportunities await you, and I can say that you will be richly rewarded by knowing that you have participated in an effort to further empower and motivate an organization that today is the envy of the RPI campus. I'd now like to introduce our consul, Joe Carpey, as president, he has the honor and, and the responsibility of bringing this chapter back into a fraternity house for many, as you heard this morning, for many it's the first time living in a fraternity house. And uh, Joe? Yeah. 
hoping for a larger symbolic key to the house. <laughs> 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 Council Carter, I charge you and the undergraduate brothers whom you represent with due care and maintenance of the property and its proper use always for the furtherance of friendship, justice, and learning in accordance with the idea of what you are. I just wanted to say one quick thing. I realize uh, this. I realized this afternoon that uh, a statistic hasn't been said yet that I think is important. Assuming our pledge retention rate is about what it has been in the past, this semester we will be initiating our thousandth member into our chapter. I would like to thank all of the alumni who have donated money to this, to this project and to this new house so, so that the next thousand can be so much better than the rest of us have been already. And that's what we can see from the pledge classes already coming in, that these guys are much better than at least my pledge classes. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. And now let us continue with the dedication. likewise a custom by which the homes of families are often dedicated to their purposes and ideals. Even so, it is fitting that this house, built for fraternal expression, should now be consecrated to its good intent. This hour is hallowed with memories. The life and activities of 158 years of Sigma Chi and of 63 years in the Delta Psi chapter converge at this point, and we here commemorate all the beautiful fellowships of the past in this chapter and in all the chapters of our, our fraternal circle. The joy and laughter, the burdens and the confidences of all the years that are gone, here greet the friendships of all the years that are to come, and yesterday now welcomes forever. Therefore, dear friends and brothers, we dedicate this house for the use of the Delta Psi chapter of Sigma Chi and to those whose names should be recalled and spoken again at this beginning of a new era in our chapter life. I ask you now to all rise. The names of our seven founders to the memory of them. Benjamin Fiat Brank Brunkle, William Lewis Lockwood, Daniel William Cooper, James Parks Caldwell, Thomas Cowan Bell, Isaac M. Jordan, Franklin Howard Scobie. Benjamin Fiat Brunkle, Courage. To the members of the undergraduate chapter, today receive this house as their fraternal home and to their successors here in the years to come to whom is entrusted the good name and well-being of Rensselaer and of our Sigma Chi fraternity whose worthy aims as a chapter of her has expressed this day is our warrant for this hour of dedication to them Thomas Cowan Bell, Will's Wisdom, in grateful appreciation of the men of Phi Epsilon Phi, who in the year 1950 became the charter members of the Delta Psi Chapter Sigma Chi Fraternity, especially Archibald Love III, and Edward Zimmer, class of 1951, and it is right here, by the way. Especially all those brothers who have contributed their time, temperaments, talents, their financial wealth, and construction of the Commodore Chapter. <laughs> Yeah. 
William Lewis Lockwood, Integrity, to the memory of our departed brothers of Delta Psi chapter, to the surviving loved ones whose fealty and love for Sigma Chi have not ceased. Isaac M. Jordan, high ambition. In loyal relation to the general fraternity of Sigma Chi, to the international officers who serve its interests, and to the thousands of Daniel William Cooper, self-control. To our alumni who in the four years have upheld on this campus the honor of the White Cross, whose generous financial aid has made possible this beautiful chapter house, especially Bill Pomeroy. To the co-chairman of the Building Our Bridge to Excellence fundraising campaign, Jim Anaki and Paul Cosgrove. To the officers of the Phi Epsilon Phi Corporation, and their official predecessors, and all those who work so tirelessly on bringing this enterprise to its consummation. And we dedicate this house. Franklin Howard Scobie, courtesy. In recognition of Brother Arch Love, who was Delta Psi's first chapter advisor, I served in that role for nearly 40 years. Uh, he was the chapter advisor when I was there from 1950 through 1987. For all those other past chapter advisors, including brothers Dick Cantillo from 87 to 1994, Bill Maslin, who's here from 1995 to 2001, Chris Griffin from 2001 to 2009, please uh, make sure you keep him in your prayers. And Scott Mitchell from 2009-2010, and of course, uh, our current chapter advisor, Bob Pepper. James Parks Caldwell, Fidelity. To all the future undergraduates who will in the years to come cross our threshold to become a part of the home life here of Brotherhood and Sigma Chi. Finally, with hushed hearts and consecrated purpose, we dedicate this house to God, the Father Almighty, Creator and Preserver of all things, and to Jesus, whose name finds reverent place in our ritual, and from whom we have the cross we wear, to Him who is the giver of every good and perfect gift, in whose strength alone we may hope to hold this house free from evil and sacred to the good, whose spirit is love, and who is the end of our quest. To the end, we reverently dedicate this house. Let us unite in asking the divine blessing upon us. Our Father, we thank thee for the many blessings. Give us from harm. May the white cross guide us and teach us I'd now like to introduce someone who many of you uh, may already know, uh, Foss Hooper. Foss is a member of the class of 66 and has become an inspiration to many of us as he has returned to all his workshops and uh, is well known for his talks of the good of the order. Foss? Well, now we're, uh, we come with something new to talk about, Bill. So the gloves are coming off. This time. Uh, this is, uh, this, uh, uh, when you know somebody in, in college, and when you get to learn uh, about them, room with them, uh, you sometimes just don't know what a person is going to turn out to be like. But if you look at Bill Pomeroy, all the necessary components were in place. 
I mean, Bill's got his engineering degree from RPI. He's an MBA in the business. He was schooled in the ins and outs of the mainframe computer industry in the late 60s and early 70s. He was marketing rep for IBM. And for those of you who knew his uncle, Dirty Russ, knew that his DNA contained the recycling gene or the re repurposing gene, I guess we can say it now. Uh, and, uh, um, and also, where was I? And, uh, uh, and also, who has this entrepreneurial spirit, who is looking for new things to do, who uh, challenges the status quo, looks for new ways to uh, uh, make things work with things that we've had in the past that served other purposes. And with that, Bill established something really marvelous as far as this company goes. Uh, I had a privilege a couple of years ago uh, on the way to a uh, workshop of uh, getting a tour through it. And it's truly a marvelous enterprise uh, that Bill has going. What, uh, what he's done uh, for his community in Rochester and uh, for all of his employees with just a marvelous work environment is truly, uh, is truly unique. Uh, how, what he is doing as far as the environment of reusing uh, technology and uh, repurposing is uh, truly wonderful. Uh, so it's something that's very impressive that Bill has done, but I don't think that's the most impressive thing about Bill. I believe Bill's most impressive accomplishment was about eight years ago, a successful battle against cancer. Uh, Approached with the same determination and same, uh, you know, uh, stick to this as, as he did building this company. But most importantly, which Bill fought with Sandra by his side every step of the way. Sandra, I am confident that without you there, Bill would not be with us today. Okay. So, so this is your day too. My distinct honor to present to you, my friend of over 50 years, our brother, William Guilford Pomeroy. <laughs> Golly, Foss, I, when I sent the check to you, I wondered whether the, the amount was high enough, but I guess it was. So I <laughs> appreciate the good words of leaving out the rest of the stuff that you could have been saying. But, uh, uh, I just wanted to say good afternoon to the brothers and the friends of Sigma Chi and the rest of the community that's here. And uh, after that introduction, uh, I have an overwhelming sense of pride what has uh, just taken place in the ceremony and what has taken place over the last couple of years of bringing this house and fraternity to where it is today. My decision to support the Bridge to Excellence campaign was quite personal because being able to help improve the places, people, and the causes that have an influence on me uh, is very important. You, you know I'm a leukemia survivor. I had a stem cell transplant in 2005 from a perfect match. And when I started the journey, I was given a 5 to 10% chance of surviving for two years. Uh, but the, the transplant saved my life. And as a result of that experience, I've been devoting my time and my staff's time and some of my treasure to helping other people have a successful experience as well by recruiting folks that are very hard to match to the National Registry for Bone Marrow so that other folks that were in a situation, become in a situation where I am, with little luck of getting through it and have the same experience that I had with recruiting today. Well over 10,000 hard to match people to the National Registry. So I was already, I already had that, that underway um, when I was approached to uh, to, to support the house um, and a couple of other things too. At the time I spent living in the chapter house, it was really one of the most meaningful experiences, certainly in my college life, and quite frankly for my, my whole life. Um, you may have noticed the uh, Pomeroy Anvil over here, that's one of the other interests uh, that I have, which is history. Um, the 
Signified Creed is inscribed on the front of the monument. I have a very strong belief in the words found on the creed. You'll find these words in there called fairness, decency, honesty, respect. These words have helped shape the core values that, that I have had in my personal and professional life. I hope you all take an opportunity to read the inscriptions on the front and the back. And of course, I couldn't be more happy to have such an anvil. It's the 11th in our series in the Pomeroy Anvil Trail uh, here at the Chapter House. To pay homage to the Sigma Chi Creed, to honor our founders of the Sigma Chi Fraternity and the Constantine Significant Six. Now, I will have to admit that uh, for me, RPI was a very difficult challenge just to graduate. It seemed like everybody else seemed to have a pretty easy time of it, but it was a struggle for me. Um, and it was a place where I learned that you, you really uh, you really needed to struggle in order to, to win and survive and get what you want. I, I learned early on too that uh, that I could manage myself through this process. Um, I, I could manage my goal, I could achieve my goals, and Sigma Chi played a very large role in this process. Now we were somewhat of a, of a serious fraternity in those days, uh, but we, I mean somewhat, uh, but, but we still had fun, like for example, discipline was very important, and uh, so it was just that tapping kegs and watching TV was just for the weekends only. But. Um, when, back in those days, when, who really needed television when you had head of the same mothers as a house band who provided our entertainment? And when you really think about it and think it through, I guess maybe we may not have been quite all that serious after all. But uh, it was my home, away from home, Sigma Chi was my family, the feeling of brotherhood was a new concept to me at the time, and it's one that I still cherish 47 years later. It, it certainly enriched my overall college experience, and I've had the good fortune of developing lifelong friends. Leadership skills, my leadership skills started developing here. I made a lot of mistakes with my brothers, and, and it was a learning experience for me. Um, I was the assistant house cha uh, manager, a chapter historian, and, and from that, uh, preserving history developed into a lifelong passion of mine. And it's one of the main focuses areas of my private foundation and our Pomeroy Anvil Trail and our program to provide uh, historic markers across the country. And so far, we've placed over 120 historic markers in New York. But Syracuse, or correction, Sirka Mackay was very influential early on in my individual success and later in life as an entrepreneur. And I, I hope my contributions are a testament to how strongly I feel about this organization the enriching experience it provides the students and the brothers, and my desire to see it continue to thrive today and well into the future. Thank you. Moving right along here, we're going to go with uh, Mr. B uh, Bob Jones again. We're going to, go to talk a little bit about the uh, Bridge to Excellence campaign. This was going to be done at the tent after dinner, but since we have time, we'll do it now so we can have more time later on for, you know what, uh, Mr. Bob Jones. As one of the honorary chairman of the Bridge of Building our Bridge to Excellence fundraising campaign, Express our sincere thanks to all who donated to the project, regardless of amount. It is entirely significant that each undergrad class during the campaign was 100% represented in the donation register. It is, however, entirely fitting to recognize several special donors at this event. Uh, ask the Grand Council's permission to keep the one flat rule in effect. The Archibald L. Love Society, which represents donations $250,000 and up, a single member, William G. Pomeroy, Jr., Pleasant. <laughs> Constantine Society, paid <coughs> to $100,000, three members, Edward F. Hooper, 66, <laughs> Paul J. Cosgrave, 72, <laughs> Donald J. Wimple, 75. <laughs> the Delta Psi 1950 <coughs> Society, twenty-five dollars to $50,000. James C. Monaki, 75. 
Bruce S. Allen, 65. Robert C. Eckert, Jr., 73. Kevin R. Casey, 79. Daniel B. DeSantis, 78. Robert J. Feldman, 75. William A. Hanson, 73. John A. Murray, 07. William G. Newman, 78. Dennis W. Powers, 63. Paul E. Brown, Jr., 78. Christopher Siraki, 73. Stephen A. Thompson, 81. And William C. Worst, 71. Our enduring thanks to these dedicated brothers. Thank you very much. Now we'll, we'll have the actual Building the Bridge the Excellence uh, speaker, Jim Minaki, uh, say a few words. Yep. Good afternoon. I'm going to say a very few words this afternoon because we do want to get on with celebration. Um, but I do want to say a couple of things. The capital campaign for building the house, obviously we've already built it, so uh, we're there. But that doesn't mean that we're finished. Um, one that I would to think of for myself. Uh, these guys have to pay that down. We have an educational foundation that still has all of its educational purposes to fulfill, and that's scholarships and putting on training programs, sending people to leadership workshop, uh, etc. All those still need to be funded. So while, while we've accomplished our first goal, which was to get to this point where we could build the house, we still have other goals for the foundation that we need to keep in mind. And so with that in mind, we still have another plaque. You might have seen the plaque that's over the fireplace that has all the major donors for the original capital campaign. That was already engraved in, uh, in bronze. Uh, but in light of the fact that we do need to continue, we have a plaque here that has all blanks on it. We have the giving levels all the same as we had before. And I would encourage all of you to think about making uh, a, a donation, uh, a pledge, again, like we did with the initial capital campaign. It can be over a five-year period. Uh, think about doing that. If you've already donated, think about increasing it to support the foundation. And the other thing I want you to think about is think about leaving the foundation. Uh, Arch Love did that to great effect, and uh, his donations continue to have impact on the chapter, and I would like to encourage all of you to think about doing that. So, thank you very much. Uh, all cause raise. Thank you, Jim. A couple of you may uh, be curious about a couple of things, one of which is why this topic and a few others in the original agenda were asterisked. Uh, I can assure you it's not because any of us take steroids. That is not the reason. Uh, my Nick was being very careful in, in setting up this program, uh, all depending on how everybody, how long everybody ahead of us spoke. And so we had to be flexible as to whether we would speak now or in the evening as we wait for President Jackson to arrive. So uh, we're ahead of schedule, so uh, we get to go. Uh, we're going on our steroids. Anyhow, uh, Jim, thank you. Some of you may be curious, why does Jim not want to be known as Jim the House Builder or Jim the Bridge Builder? Now, there's a joke about this, and I'm not allowed to tell it for some reasons that many of you in the audience know, but I want to tell you that uh, Larry Fry, uh, please stand, stand up, Larry. Uh, better known as Grizzle, is the originator of this joke, and he will be glad to tell you the tagline at any time, as long as women are not present. That's all I can say about it. Now, Jim left me the job of uh, reminding you uh, about Pine Ridge Education Foundation and, and why we continue to use your help. Uh, one of the most important reasons is not only did we uh, raise a fair amount of money to build this house, a million five, uh, but we had to take out a pretty sizable mortgage as well. And uh, that's the thing that probably keeps us up at night, actors up at night, because I remind them about once a month that they have to build the house. And if they don't, then uh, we have the challenge paying off the mortgage. 
So any help we can get on paying off the mortgage is obviously one of the things we need money for. But we need money for other things as well. By, by being able to set ourselves up as a 501c with the, uh, with the uh, IRS, we had to tell them that we were an education foundation and not just a bunch of house builders. So um, we are committed to do a number of activities uh, that are educational in nature. And uh, those are going to include some seminars that we intend to put on, training activities, uh, a number of other uh, programs that are open both to people in the house and to other people on campus, uh, and we're going to fund those. One of the suggestions we had recently is to uh, conduct some of those with some of you. Hopefully we'll get people volunteering to do this. We already have a fair number that have volunteered. But if anyone that's interested in volunteering for one of these seminars, it could be career orientation, it could be leadership development, things of that nature, we're willing to help us, we appreciate it. Some of you may want to do that, but for whatever reason don't want to travel back here. So we're going to also uh, go out and acquire some um, webinar software so we can do some of that over the over the internet as well. And I'm actually working with the university and doing that in the corporate phase of the university. Uh, so uh, there's really some good news there. The other interesting thing we're working on, and hopefully Dr. Jackson, when she speaks, will talk about this as well, is because of our location here in Troy, uh, the uh, common carriers here do not offer the best state-of-the-art broadband service into this house. And so while we have absolutely the best uh, even the capabilities in this house in terms of what was put in place, uh, the line that comes from that pole over there to the house, is that wire is not big enough. And so we would love to see some fiber go from there to there, but because of the carriers, we actually needed to go back to the campus so we can tap into the campus's fiber, which is about 10 times faster than what the carriers here are currently offering. So we've been working with the university to be able to extend the fiber that currently runs out on Congress Street all the way out here to Pauling. And three fraternities in this area are all working together on that. And uh, we're, we're, we just completed the initial study, and we expect to be able to hook up to the fiber connection. It's obviously going to cost us some money as well. So those are the kind of things we're working on and need some additional funding for. Uh, Jim wanted me to let you all know that if you had not had the opportunity to pledge, but you maybe have seen the plaque where we have all the people that contributed at least $1,000 listed, we do have a second plaque here. And the second plaque, your name here, we can add more people so that anyone that missed the first round of pledging uh, is still able to pledge and, and help us. And guess what? I also have pledge forms with me. So, <laughs> so if anyone needs to see me, one person has already done that today. Uh, Jim Storch. Thank you, Jim. So uh, uh, if you need help in figuring out how to do this, ask Jim. He can explain to you how to do this. Just come and see me and I'll give you one of these pledge forms. And that would be very helpful. So uh, we we hope to continue to fund it, and we would really appreciate that. That is my statement. I'm now going to be ready for that. Okay. You want to say something? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, thank you, thank you, Rob. Uh, well, uh, oh, you better do this. Uh, it's, my, it's my privilege right now as a uh, fellow order of uh, Constantine, Constantine, I guess it is, to introduce uh, Bob Shortle, who is the uh, past president of the, of the order. Uh, Bob Shortle. Thank you, Rob. The order of Constantine is the highest honor the fraternity can bestow upon a brother for a career of service. The minimum requirements to be considered is that you have to be an alumnus for 20 years. But in reality, the minimum is 20 years of dedicated service. We have selected 670 members of the Order of Constantine in our 65 years, and we are very proud here at Delta Psi that we have had six brothers selected for the Order from the more than 30,000 alumni in Sikai, the two more than 240 chapters. Okay, for those of you who pulled out your slide rule, do that math real quick. 300,000 300, members. For those of you who've done the math and know that we have a that we're approaching 1,000 members here at Delta Psi, you can tell that we have more than three times the number of dedicated brothers to our fraternity than anywhere else. Now, remember, as I 
identify these names, the one clap rule is still in effect. In order of induction into the order. Originally from Pittsfield, Mass., this brother now hails from Averill Park and is a past McEaster, a past member of our House Corporation, founder and past chapter advisor at Albany State for 12 years, assistant chapter advisor to Arch for many years, and our current chapter advisor for the past three years, inducted in the order in 2012 from the class of 1973, I'm just a pledge, Robert Charles Edgar Jr. <laughs> That was a very long one clap. <laughs> Originally from Islip, Long Island, this brother now lives in Herndon, Virginia. Our chairman for multiple reunions, 1984, 1995, 2000, 2010, 2013, and 2000 and something to come. Our brother, we in the fraternity circles refer to as a glue guy. He has connected our brothers from all generations together for more than 40 years. And our chairman for this reunion celebration today, inducted into the Order of Constantine in 2011 from the class of 1971, Robert F. Ruff Hutnick. <laughs> Originally from Valhalla, New York, now hailing from the big Apple, New York City, a past president of the New York City alumni chapter, a perennial faculty member at Balfour Leadership Training Workshop and Province Workshops, secretary for the Pinewoods Educational Foundation, and warden for our founder Lockwood's Monument in Brooklyn, inducted into our order in 2000, and 2000 from the class of 1968, Larry W. Dead our next brother hails from Charlotte, North Carolina, and has participated on virtually every committee, board, and office that the fraternity has, including the Ritual Renaissance Committee, <laughs> History Commission, Sigma Chi Leadership Institution, Technology Committee, Ex Executive Committee, a former Grand Trustee, a former Grand Praetor, a former Grand Proconsul, Balfour Leadership Training Workshop Committee Chairman and longtime faculty member, significant SIG, Inducted into our order in 1993, from the class of 1973, the 65th Grand Council of our fraternity, Robert Henry Wellens Jones III. <laughs> Finally, our last brother, in the order, gave us other five the inspiration for more than 50 years. He was chapter advisor for nearly 40 years, from the time of the installation of Delta Psi in 1950 until he was unable to continue. He was decades long leader of the Albany Skinnick Detroit Alumni Chapter, winner of the Sigma Chi Montgomery Award for Best Chapter Publications, the J. Minton Best Chapter Officer Award in 1967, the LeClerc Outstanding Chapter Advisor Award previously from Loudonville, and now hailing in the chapter eternal, inducted in order in 1980 from the class of 1942, Archibald L. Lodge III. We will now have a uh, seven-minute uh, uh, intermission while we await the uh, president of RPI. So you can talk, you can do whatever you want. We have seven minutes. He's the pro counsel from uh, Delta Psi uh, chapter, and he would like to say a few words. Okay. In order to continue to.
to disrupt the itineraries which you guys are so intently following, uh, I've actually been given the opportunity to speak to you about our campus involvement and uh, more specifically what we actually do on campus and the new and exciting things that are going on in that respect. For the last 10 years or so, the undergraduate Delta Psi has been on a very steep upward climb. With the unyielding support of our alumni, we've been able to accomplish things that we never had before and reach new heights. For example, this last spring semester, we actually had a cumulative GPA of 3.22, which is the first time. The first time in several years that we've actually been both above the all men's average, 3.13, and the all fraternity average, 3.07. Additionally, we currently hold three out of the five executive positions on the IFC, as well as having two other officer positions. In the Red and White Student Organization, we have one of the vice presidents and all three of the committee executive director positions. We have brothers involved in a number of different ways on campus, ranging from the orchestra, to Formula SAE, the outing club, we even have a couple pledges participating in varsity athletics. We're intramural frisbee champions. <laughs> we also have the class president for the class of 2015, Brandon Wynn. We have a member of the House who is currently serving on the Union E Board, as well as a number of senators. So earlier, you heard our Grand Consul, Mike Greenberg, talk about his vision for building enduring leaders and really growing them through Sigma Chi. It all starts here. This is the place where those things start to develop and eventually grow. I'm excited to see where our brothers will reach in the future. Lastly, I'd like to introduce Another brother of our fraternity who is actually serving as the highest elected official for the student body, the Grand Marshal Chuck Carletta Jr. Thank you, Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers of the Sigma Chi fraternity and distinguished guests, it is truly an honor to be speaking this afternoon on such a special occasion. The dedication of the Pomeroy Chapter House is a shining example of our strong brotherhood and the commitment we each have to this fraternity even after graduation. I remember when I first joined Sigma Chi two years ago. There were many discussions on the timeline for the construction of the house you see before you. Not many thought that this project could make the progress it did in such a short time. It was only possible because of the dedication and determination of our alumni and because of our strong relationship with RPI. Right now, I can't help but think how lucky I am to be a brother of this chapter, to be surrounded by an active and caring alumni support base, to be a part of an exceptional group of men who are united under a common set of ideals and standards. Without RPI, I might never have been able to join the fraternity, let alone Sigma Chi. This school has given me so many opportunities throughout my three, now going on four years. It has contributed to the success of this chapter by growing and educating all of its members through academics and extracurricular activities. Our alumni, active brothers, and RPI are all working together to not only meet the expectations of what a fraternity is supposed to be, but more importantly, we are looking to be leaders and set the example. It's not the new chapter house that defines this fraternity as a successful organization, though. It is, our, it is the strength of our brotherhood. With our continuing membership growth of the exemplary members within our fraternity, the core values upon which Sigma Chi was founded are upheld. With this continued growth and support, I have no doubt that our conduct as brothers and students will be a proper display of the noble purposes and designs of this fraternity. Thank you. Now, what 
would everyone please join me in welcoming a person who has a special relationship in connecting RPI and fraternity life on this campus. Everyone, the 18th president of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson. Admit, uh, I'm very blessed because I have two chucks in my life. <laughs> uh, Charles Carletta Sr. is the general counsel uh, of the university and the secretary of the institute. And I don't want to embarrass him, but I've known the Grand Marshal, the brother, literally since he was a child. <laughs> But I always thought he was more handsome than his father. <laughs> so good afternoon and welcome. I am delighted to join you today to mark this opening of the Sigma Chi fraternity Pomeroy Chapter House. And we are pleased to have back in Troy the alumni brothers of Sigma Chi and their families joining us during this reunion and homecoming weekend. I also would like to offer a uh, special welcome uh, to the alumni brothers because uh, you are so important in the lives of our current students. And so I urge you not just to be here today, but to stay engaged with these and see how stellar they really are. Of course, I uh, greet the active brothers of Sigma Chi. Cutting the ribbon to open this uh, fraternity, Pomeroy Chapter House, marks the successful completion of your Building Our Bridge to Excellence program. And so let's give them, the young brothers, a round of applause. As you have heard, today is the culmination of years of dedication and effort. And the Sigma Chi Brotherhood should be very proud of its accomplishments. I understand that you have exceeded your fundraising goal, raising more than $1.5 million to help cover the $2.8 million cost of renovating this house. It has taken much discussion, planning, and vision to allow us to be celebrated today. On top of the countless hours many of the brothers volunteered, the philanthropy of many people made this possible, leaving an important legacy for future Sigma Chi brothers. And so we thank all of you. I also understand that several alumni provided sizable gifts to make this announcement today possible. That generosity suggests how important Sigma Chi has been in their lives. Now it is fitting that this house will now known as the Sigma Chi Fraternity Pomeroy Chapter House to recognize the generation, generosity of Mr. William G. Pomeroy of the class of 1966 and Bill is delightful to see you here. You know, he has been a very, very good supporter of the Rensselaer Annual Fund for more than 20 years. And as you know, he is the founder and CEO of CX Tech, a global provider of networking, cable, and voice technology equipment for more than 30 years. Rensselaer has recognized his business leadership by awarding him the William F. Glazer Class of 53 Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2008. <coughs> Mr. Pomeroy, with your lead gift and with the assistance, uh, the assistance of your company, in wiring this house, not to mention your personal commitment to realizing this vision, and if you don't watch out, that anvil might be at the president's house. <laughs> <laughs> but with all that you have done, you have provided Sigma Chi and Rensselaer with a profound legacy, and we're truly grateful for your support. So this is a new era for the Delta Psi chapter of Sigma Chi that for more than 60 years has embodied a proud tradition here at Rensselaer. 
by supporting academic achievement, community service, and leadership development. Sigma Chi has produced young men who have demonstrated strength of character and who have, in true Rensselaer tradition, changed the world. We have recognized Sigma Chi's position of leadership on our campus by awarding the chapter the 2011 President's Cup and by recognizing their chapter advisor, uh, Bob Justa Eckhart, class of 70. <laughs> with the 2012 Advisor of the Year Award. Why don't you stand? Now, one of these days, you'll have to tell me the justice. <laughs> Sigma Chi is part of a very dynamic Greek system at Rensselaer, a system steeped in tradition, that provides our student body with a wealth of opportunity for social and philanthropic interaction within the Greek, Rensselaer, and Greater Troy communities. Greek Life, L-I-F-E, which stands for Leadership, Innovation, Fortitude, and Evolution, benefits our students, the Institute, and our surrounding communities. At its best, it exemplifies what we need when we use the term community. And what we really mean by that is the brotherhood is a community, friends near as a community, but recognizes that we are part of the larger community of which we are a part. Now many of the ideals that have been promoted through the Greek system dovetail with our clustered learning advocacy and support for students or class. Class engages and supports all of our students as they progress through the institute with tight-knit residential clusters or commons, including, importantly, the Greek commons, with its own associate team. Class aims to provide our students with cohesive living learning community that fosters personal and professional growth, leadership skills, a sense of belonging, and a sense of obligation to the larger community around us. And as we implement our new strategic blueprint, the Rensselaer Plan 2024, we aim to provide even more co-curricular programs through class that bring together Rensselaer's rigorous academics within the supportive environment of student life. Our goal is to develop well-rounded, engaged, mature thinkers and innovators who are intellectually agile who possess the multicultural sophistication to become transformative forces in Boston. Sigma Chi has adopted a class model of personal, professional, and leadership development. The house that we are dedicating today embodies the spirit of class and was renovated with that in mind. Through expanded study rooms, which I'm looking forward to seeing, and common areas, the brothers have ample space to participate in academic programming, group training, and leadership development activities. The students, the brothers of the Delta Psi chapter, now have a wonderful moment in which to connect with each other and to reach their full potential as individuals. Now this effort benefits more than just the brothers of Sigma Chi, because through this renovation, you, in fact, have added value to the Institute as a whole. Other Greek organizations also will be able to connect directly to the Rensselaer Network of Internet <coughs> Services as a result of the collaborative process that you have had with the Division of the Chief Information Officer, including Chief Information Officer John Cole of the class of 1979, General Counsel Charles Hartland, and of course the chapter itself. The institute, the installation of a new fiber optic line will provide our students here with a more extremely fast and more seamless connection to the data and information they need to succeed in the kind of world we're entering that is data driven web-enabled supercomputer power, and of course, interconnected. 
the efforts of current Rensselaer students and the brothers here, coupled with the financial assistance and leadership provided by alumni brothers, have resulted in a house that truly will be a home, as well as a place to foster future generations of leadership coming from the great fraternity. So, I'm so delighted to be here. Congratulations on a job well done.